Benini captivates the eye, imagination, and soul through profound art in several dimensions. Italian by birth, he's exhibited internationally since the 1960s. After he and wife Lorraine moved to Johnson City in 1999, they opened their own exhibits indoors and out as the Benini Galleries and Sculpture Ranch. Along with their personal collection and Benini sculptures, artists from around the world contribute to a public gallery against a hill country backdrop. Inside, step into Benini's gallery and adjacent studio where he paints through the night, thriving on four or five hours of sleep. In this gallery, you'll see about a 45 year span of his paintings. From the, it was about a 20 year time period, he painted the symbol of the rose. Then he went into the geometric period where he shaped the canvases, not in the traditional square corners, but shaped them according to the design. Now those are blended, hand blended acrylics on canvas. From that period, he went into the more recent work, which are the abstracts. There's According Chaos and A Face of God series, which also includes the blended acrylics and then also dropped pigments. Benini and I met in Gainesville. I was at the University of Florida, completing my master's degree there in journalism and communications, and I was sent to interview him. He's fond of saying the interview ain't over yet, <laughs> but we've been together 30, about 35 years. They moved to the Hill Country Ranch, once owned by President Johnson, for us 147 acres that distanced Pandini from distractions. But it was the view that sold them. It was a, a tremendous reason for us to come here, the high up on the, the mountain where our home is. We came for privacy at the time. It gave us a lot of serenity. Benini felt that the Texas Hill Country, it reminded him a lot of the Mediterranean region where he was born, he liked that. We got involved in this project, sort of a circuitous route, because we started placing sculpture that we owned on the property. Then they opened the outdoor gallery to their friends from around the world. We allowed them to pick spots on the ranch for the placement. Many sculptors have a studio where they create the work, but perhaps not a place to showcase it. The sculptors love their work outdoors. Going outside is totally different. Mother Nature is there with all her impositions and all of her beauty. To share that experience with the public, they opened the sculpture ranch on selected days, free of charge. Seeing them at different times of the day, different times of the year, they, they change, they respond to the weather, the sunsets behind them, the birds landing on them. We've had a number of birds build nests in the sculpture, so there's an interaction of nature, you know, with art and the human element plus Mother Nature that is ever-changing every day. And the difference of the pieces in nature. It's all quite fascinating. When a sculptor arrives, they all tour the ranch to find the most resounding location and orientation to its background. One difference from an indoor gallery is mounting that's sturdy enough to withstand occasional fierce winds that whip around the mountain. Many of the sculptures are for sale. A lot of them we own, and of course those are not for sale. We do not require commission from these sculptors. Having said that, many of them insist on returning something. By the same token, Benini doesn't want to make money off of any other artist, so we have an arrangement that if they choose to return something, we put, and we cap that, we put it in an acquisition fund, and any of those funds that accumulate, we use that and we buy one of their sculptures. In drought, when springtime wildflower peepers don't have much to see, there's always a blue bonnet at the ranch. Every season paints a different native plant background with a few surprises from resident wildlife. Benini's indoor galleries frame another experience that documents his journey as an artist. This is more like a big cavern and I have people walk in here and they say this is like a temple of art and there's a serenity here. Some people come for hours and they stay here and that's fine. It's almost spiritual if they choose that. They have their own relationship with the, the work and the space. He works with acrylics. Very, very early on in the late 50s and early 60s, he painted with some oils in Italy. That's all they had in Italy at that time. When Benini arrived in the States, he discovered acrylics. 
They engaged him with their color brilliance and permanency. To this day, he does a blending process. No airbrush, he hand blends. But his technique requires high humidity and low temperatures. When it gets really hot and really dry, he can't pull those, those paints like he needs to. And even then, he's, he's working with seconds because any artist who's worked with acrylics know as quickly as you're putting them down, they're trying to dry on you. Benini doesn't use the retarders, but he, he goes after that really, really, the essence, that, that color brilliance. And so he works just with the humidity and the temperature. He'll work in a studio with humidifiers going and cold temperatures, but even then, you know, sometimes it's problematic. The last couple of summers have really in, encouraged us to look where he might have cooler climates. As Benini and Lorraine explore their next destination, the property is up for sale. Still, their voyage to the hill country will live on. It's been a pleasure to introduce art to a lot of the school systems, to a number of people who perhaps haven't had access to art in the way that some of us in the cities have had. I mean, some of these ranchers who have walked in and they weren't quite sure what was here. That some of them stood at the doorway and as polite as could be and tipped their hat and howdy ma'am, may I come in? And it's been such a pleasure, you know, to share something different, you know, with them and, and then to have them come back with their families. You know, what a compliment. Benini's not only been generous with his land, he's given his time to countless students, encouraging the next generation of artists. This gives them an opportunity to see the journey of one artist and they can ask anything they want and they can learn what worked for him. One of the things he tells them always though is read, read, read. He's a strong advocate of, of the importance of reading and studying what came before in the history of art. We have probably 25,000 books on the property, different libraries on, on the property and he, he stresses the importance of reading and the importance of trying different materials, finding your own voice, finding your own style. Thank you.